How appropriate. The last log we read from the crew is the last log of any of the members. That's gotta be outright soul-crushing to retreat from one bad situation just to see the other outpost no longer exists as well. We were expecting a sad ending for these troops anyway, but still... Yikes! Right! More bugs! How the hell are these things supposed to be cunning, considering they have so few attack options? I mean, sure, they could try to hit us from behind while we're distracted with the other hornets, but absolutely every enemy in the game will try to shoot us in the back or side if we offer that to them. There's nothing about how these bugs attack us that feels especially underhanded or clever compared to every other enemy we are going to fight in this game, much less the series. Eh. Anyway, seems we found the local containers, and they seem to be just basic pottery. Don't really feel the need to start breaking anything here, though, since we're in good health and have a good complement of missiles. Not that our ammo or health is all that impressive this early on. And it used only just enough force for us to mildly bounce. For some reason, I was expecting it to launch us a lot harder. I'm pretty sure we had to destroy hives like that back on Talon 4. But then I'm also sure that we're fighting the same breed of flying hostile bug as we did in that game. This series isn't exactly shy about us fighting against the same types of weaker enemies in various entries. Hell, it's not shy about us fighting against the same bosses either occasionally. Remains that will probably be repaired the next time we enter this area. It's not like we're permanently clearing the place out. We're just slightly making things easier for us right now. Just for it to reset at a later point. It might not lead us forward, but at the very least I'd probably feel better if we could destroy all the hives in this area. I know I need to activate another console to get another cannon working, but it's clearly not in an especially obvious place. As tempted as I feel to fast forward though, we're still pretty early in the game, besides... Me being a bit of an idiot at the occasional point as I try to figure things out, it's kind of a thing in Metroid, it doesn't matter if it's 2D or 3D. Those bugs certainly seem to respawn in a hurry, that's for sure. Right. Of course, we can't just jump that high up yet. We need as many reminders as possible that we're at the start of the game, and I have quite a few upgrades to grab before we're done. So, we're supposed to break through that bit of wall? And apparently we're not supposed to break completely through it, at least not yet. <sighs> Still, I'll take what progress I can find. Hell, part of the fun of coming back to a solid game after a long period of time is that you need to rediscover some things. Okay, am I supposed to be worried since the area has gotten a bit darker in the time it's taken me to make some progress? I don't remember this game having any kind of night and day cycle.
definitely should have found that a lot sooner than I did. Ah well, it's not like there's some invisible timer. At least I assume not, though the sky darkening kinda has me a bit worried. And that takes care of that annoying spawn point for now, at least. Again, I'm rather sure that the next time we're in this part of the map, those same nests are going to be active again. Well, that's certainly a new type of corpse. For some reason, I'm more curious what counts as a cycle around here than what killed this unknown bastard. So for some reason, we're unable to open certain doors without translation software, but activating elevators and cannons is no problem despite them also being built by this alien civilization. Kind of makes the locked doors feel just that little bit more arbitrary. But then I suppose most, if not all, the barriers in this series are arbitrary, especially since we keep having to start from scratch at the start of every damn game. Again, if they're gonna give us a timeline thing, then can we get a better idea of how long a cycle is? It's not like I know if this planet has a 24 hour day or not. And that's assuming that a cycle is a full day and night, as opposed to an outright year. Is it the same kind of toxin we saw in the zombified marines? I'm vaguely worried these things might decide to get up and start attacking us at some point. While the crap going on around here doesn't quite remind me of the X from Fusion and Dread, it is still playing a few of the same notes here. Body possession isn't exactly a unique thing to see in fiction, after all, and definitely not in this series. Well, it's been a while since the last save, so let's take this chance to take a bit of a breather. Not that the clip is gonna show all that much of a breather. Hell, this clip is gonna have another pretty abrupt ending, since I felt it should take longer than nine minutes, but be shorter than half an hour if I can help it. Eh, it might take several clips before I'm comfortable enough to end a clip on a save point again. I guess it was a waste of time trying to scan that, then. So, we've got a number of sleepers here. Well, since we don't know if whatever is sleeping in there is hostile, let's try to avoid poking that hornet's nest. We've got plenty of other threats to deal with in this game. One of which just triggered a cutscene to give us a hard time. Right, and here comes the black mist to turn those fragile bugs into something far more durable. Well, at least we don't have to worry about getting cornered. The bastards locked us into a round arena. Yeah, nothing new here. They're the same type of monsters that attacked us back at the deer ship, and which absolutely wrecked the Federation Force 1. I'm pretty sure this is just a warm-up for whatever boss decided to come after us here and now. And 
And here comes the boss itself from the thing that we weren't allowed to scan in the room earlier. I'm pretty sure we should be able to take this bastard on. Though it doesn't look like the Black Mist has taken it over yet. Yeesh! It certainly feels a bit more frantic to deal with than some of the early game bosses of the first Metroid Prime. It doesn't help that for some reason I keep losing my damn lock-on. On the Wii version, that wouldn't be so bad because you can still track them with uh, your targeting reticle a bit, but here? Yeah. Oh dear. I'm not entirely sure the effect was intentional, especially this early on in the fight. So we're not allowed to scan the Black Mist itself, just the creature it infects. At least now it has a health bar, we know just how close to victory we are against it here. That seems promising. Not liking the damage exchange rate though, especially this early on. Ah well, I came braced for a brutal adventure. I'm actually less scared of its spit than the lock breaking charge. Easier to avoid and no chance of me stumbling for a bit. Right. Doesn't matter how far you are from the charging bastard, you have just as much time to react. And that does it! The first boss fight finished in the game! Again, a bit of a worrying sign that a boss fight this early on was this damn savage. Ah well, at least it was short. So the first thing we get from a boss is something we can't identify. And it's not like we have the option to not stuff the thing we know nothing about into our suit. The shield around us uh, won't let just open up until we grab the thing. Well, it didn't bring us to full health either, so it doesn't feel all that beneficial just yet to me. Here's hoping we get some kind of explanation for it soon. While every upgrade we get in Metroid is useful, some are more useful than others. Hence why I tend to ignore missile expansions after a while. I've been in far too many temples made by sci-fi civilizations over the years. I just cannot even muster the most sarcastic of wonder for how an old place like this has functioning elevators. But then it's not like we know how old this place is anyway. Ah! A living member of that race we saw some corpses of. We're going to be doing a lot more reading than listening to you, I'm afraid. Still, always nice to have someone to interact with in these adventures, even if it's not like Samus really bounces back with the guy. A strange power that apparently has something to do with Phazon. At least based on what Dark Samus was absorbing on the other side of the portal, there's also the fact that Phazon came to Talon 4 by way of an asteroid as well. Though that certainly didn't cause any alternate world bullshit. Really, 
The name we're giving these creatures is the ing, an English suffix? Great. Now part of me thinks they should be red, not black. Then I could make quite a few jokes about uh, the English Empire. Well, that's not much of a problem. I don't tend to get a lot of peace or mercy in these kinds of situations anyway. And of course, we happen to arrive just as the conflict was about to finish for the bad guys, so we can bring the good guys back from the brink. Still, at least there are some people on this planet to save, even if they weren't the people we initially came here for. That's got to be worth something. Sounds like a horrifying device, but I can't find it in me to be especially glad that we grabbed it, since you people designed it in the first place. I know in this particular conflict that the Doomsday Weapon is justified, since the Luminoth are getting their asses under them conventionally by a planet that did not exist not too long ago. It's probably not easy to keep that thing secured, since the enemy can take over bodies. But dear god, when you design a weapon that can destroy an entire damn world, you don't have too much room to complain when your enemies turn it around on you. As a side note, just how did you, Moss, here manage to learn our names since Samus didn't introduce herself to him? It's not really important, I know, but it kind of jumped out at me. Eh, as a side note, you, Moss's name is just unmemorable enough that I'm probably going to have to double check what it is in the future. And at some point, I'm probably just going to refer to him as Exposition guy. Eh, it's not like he's ever gonna take a more active role in this, uh, particular story. Well, thanks for arbitrarily unlocking some of the doors ahead. He's kind of similar to Adam that way. I'm sure they will, but I'm also sure they would have been just as determined to kill us even if we didn't have it. They aren't exactly the conversational sort, like most of our enemies in this series. Why do I somehow get the feeling this guy wouldn't have stood a chance against the very boss we just beat to get this major device, even though it was one of the easiest bosses that we're gonna have to fight in this game? Heightened reflexes compared to what? I'm pretty sure that Samus is supposed to have higher-end reflexes as well, and, uh... A lot of other things that we end up fighting have supposedly high reflexes. So, what's the baseline? Well, I'm sure he isn't the only Luminoth outside of Stasis. But then I'm also sure that all the other ones are dead just to make things a bit more bleak on this planet. Definitely says so, something that I don't really care much for how bleak things are on this world as we arrive. We fought through plenty of shitty situations over the years, and frankly, a world we've never seen before being in danger of uh, this kind of end of the world situation is kind of just prompting a shrug out of me, especially when most of the population is in stasis, so we can't really see anyone explicit to defend other than you, Moss, until we hit the finale. Okay, so the Luminoth were space explorers before deciding to settle down on this planet for some reason. Seems pretty similar to Talon Force Origins as a Chozo colony, really. They're not even trying to make this look like something from an alternate language. It's just a random geometric shape for the Zega looking cool. Anyway, I'm sure there was a purple door near the spot where we fought that boss.
doesn't look like we're going to have the means to come back the way we came from for a long time. Not that there's really all that much reason to head back to our ship or the Federation landing zone. I just can't help thinking this game's trying to be a combination of Metroid Fusion and the first Metroid Prime. Not really a terrible idea, but I don't think they had a good enough grasp of exactly what worked in these two uh, games to mix them together. At the very least, this game certainly isn't viewed as fondly as the other two I just mentioned. Oddly disappointed that energy-based enemy is that easy to take down. Anyway, we're getting pretty close to the cutoff point now. Race for the end of this clip, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>